Stole rats. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, episode three of the Kit Fox Apex build. So finished up the tail feathers. They're ready to cover. So let me show you what we got going on here. I uh, took about four coats of super fill. Uh, kind of working it like a body work on, an, on, an, on a car or something. But start out with some high saw, then put some uh, super fill, sanded it smooth. You can see the different layers from, from the application. Um, came out real nice. You can see the right down the line. It's shaped very uniform between the front and the back. Um, looks like there's dips in it from the camera, but that's just the dis different color from the high saw to the super fill. And you can actually see the white coming through from the frame. So anyway, that's done on both sides of the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. Again, nice smooth transition between the two. So maybe just a little bit of sanding right there. Otherwise it looks real good. And then I also finished up the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. So take a look at that real quick. You can see it's shaped, got the rounded shape cut out here. That was fun to do. <clears throat> I figured that if it looked real good before I covered it, everything was smooth like you could put paint on it, then it will look good when it's covered. So that portion's done. I'll pull the uh, rudder off for the last time, hopefully before it's covered. Um, and then move on to the next step. This has been done. It's a really nice job done. Door frame all the way down. And uh the door frame that's one of the steps that needs to be done still needs to be fitted to the fuselage uh let's move back in the cockpit you can see uh all the um seat mounting brackets ha have the catcher or the uh i can't remember what those are called where you the screw is a backing nut that gets riveted in place those are all done and the center console is in. The slot you have cut up here is for the parking brake, which I'm in the process of ordering all the brake system from Behringer. The gear should be here, the landing gear should be here um, in a couple weeks. So my landing gear for my other Kit Fox is, uh, should be done next week. And Tony already has the gear legs welded up for this one, he called me yesterday and wanted some measurements on where these brackets are and show you what I'm talking about. In these brackets back here where it's doubled up, this isn't, this doubler isn't on the five. It just has a little tube for the float fittings. So it's much stronger on the seven back here. And then it's also gusseted in the front. And if we go underneath, you can see the whole spacing. That's what he wanted me to measure on that. You also see it from the top where these holes are front and back. And so landing gear will be here um, probably mid-March and uh, still working on the brake system. Ran into a bit of a problem potentially using the Behringer system. And let me show you what I'm talking about there. So on the Behringers, there is not a, doesn't have a remote um, reservoir. So here's the Grove brake assembly and you have your brake lines come in here and here and the reservoir is usually mounted on the firewall so on the Behringer system I'll show you what it looks like in the catalog here you have um, this one here so this is your master cylinder and then your reservoir sits on it almost like it's basically a motorcycle style reservoir so the spacing between, let's pretend that this was the Behringer master cylinder, the spacing between where that reservoir mounts and the edge is about one inch. The main issue I'm running into is the way the master cylinder is mounted here, this one's just sitting in place, but 
it's very close to this um, fuselage piece of tubing. It's very, very closely mounted to the side. <clears throat> if this uh, was placed on the inside, then it wouldn't be an issue, but it it's too close to the wall for the Behringer Master Cylinder because it has a little reservoir that mounts sideways right here and it would contact the frame. So that won't work. Um, we've looked at using another reservoir that's mounted vertically. It also will not work because it's too long out this way and will contact the firewall. Harrison at Behringer USA is working with me on that. And what we're gonna do is um, figure out how to make it work on a kit box. And then he'll be able to supply a kit with all the parts that we're gonna use to make this work. So if you guys wanna do Behringer on your build, you just call him up and say, I want the Kit Fox 7. So we're gonna go through that process to make it easier for you guys. All right, here's the board for today. And the panel layout's an ongoing project, so not much to do on that today. I'm gonna to focus on the doors, and I'll show you some of the, what I'm doing there. And then you can see over here on the order list, Behringer brake project, we're still working on coming up with a solution for that. Um, Harrison is actually in France as we speak, working out a solution, so that's awesome. Um, that's the stuff that's been ordered. I haven't ordered the upholstery yet or the eye level. I'll talk about the eye level and see what you guys think about that. Um, so the stuff down here that's been ordered is the gearbox, the landing gear, the cowling, and the firewall. And then I've received already the the super fill, we use that. The co-pilot uh, pedal hardware was missing, so I got that in from Kit Fox, and the pedals on that side are now installed. And there's the pedals that are installed now on the co-pilot side. So I was missing these bolts and the bushing inside for the co-pilot side only. So those are all set up. All right, guys, so I want to talk about the panel for a moment. We're looking at the uh, old panel from Trent's airplane, just mocked up. Probably going to go pretty simple. I'm going to utilize an iPad for the majority of what I do when I fly. I've been looking at the eye level system. If anyone's using that, please give me some feedback on the eye level system. If you guys aren't familiar with what it does, it's a little box that the pitot and static um, inputs go into, and it's an ADHARS unit, so it gives you your full um, you know, attitude indicator information. But with the pitot and static, it's giving you the actual airspeed, uh, actual altimeter, you know, just like an, a round gauge would for those things. And it works with ForeFlight for the ADHARS information. So you can get your ADS-B in, um, the whole box set up. It's about 1500 bucks, and then you need an iPad. Now I'll probably do some backup round gauges, hopefully small ones, do an airspeed and an altimeter, and have the iPad. And then the uh, Grand Rapids engine monitor is what's probably going to work best with this engine, and that actually works with the eye level app. So this last picture is an example of what I'm thinking about doing. So share your feedback on what you think of the panel ideas and if you guys have any other products that I should be looking at, uh, go ahead and shoot me a comment on that. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here and then create another uh, episode for the door installation which is coming up next. So I hope you enjoyed the build. I'll leave you with a little flying that we did last weekend. We are out looking for some waterfalls. Beautiful day, just after some heavy rain, so there are waterfalls all over east of uh, Sacramento, up the canyons. 